Hello everyone, this is Blaine Pearson and in this series we're going to review how to build financial statements with Excel. This is part one of the video series. It includes how to open the Excel workbook, the data entry, and how to name cells. The first step in developing financial planning statements is to first analyze client data. If you're taking this class as part of 2315 or 5371, you'll be given hypothetical clients that you'll work with throughout the semester. It'll look very similar to the document on the screen. In this case, we have two clients, Amber and Caleb de Leon. In this document, we see three pages of financial planning information that we will have to organize for them and create recommendations for them. The first step in creating the financial planning statement is to first open an Excel document. You'll want to have a place that you can access either through Dropbox or your local desktop computer. The first step will be to create an Excel document, which is easily done by hitting New, Microsoft Excel Worksheet, and labeling the worksheet. In this particular case, I'm going to name it Daily Owned Financial Planning Statements. From here, I will open up the Excel document and I will have a blank Excel page. The first step is to go to the client data and analyze their assets, their liabilities, their cash inflows, and their cash outflows. Amber and Caleb de Leon are clients. And in this row, I'm going to add the items that we will examine, the amount annualized, and the categories that we can classify these as. The first items that we'll analyze will be the assets. I like to go through the entire financial planning document and find all the assets. Here we see a 403B, we see IRAs, and we see Roth accounts. What we'll need to do is list the item. So for example, 403B balance the amount in dollar terms and the category. So 403B is an asset. And we'll do that for all of the assets listed. Here I've listed the client's assets, the client's inflows, liabilities, and an outflow. After you have entered all the information for the client, you'll then go to Name Manager to name each of the values. To do this, you'll go into the Formulas tab, select Name Manager, select New, and then select what you would like to name each individual cell. So for example, B3 refers to this cell in Sheet 1 of B3, which is the 403B balance. I will select OK. I will then do this again for all of the other cells. I will select Name Manager, New, ensure that it refers to B4, and make sure that I'm naming it the value that we want to name it, and select OK. What this will allow us to do is it will allow us to create financial statements from this data sheet. To save time, what I also can do is I can highlight the selection I would like to name and the corresponding values I would like to name them, select Create from Selection next to Name Manager and Formulas, and here I want to create names for these values based on the values to the left. So for example, this $52,495 number will want to correspond with the column to the left, which is Caleb's Roth IRA in this case. So I've highlighted multiple entries here. 
Why would I like to name these entries are in the left column. I select OK, and if I go back into Name Manager, I can see now that I have multiple entries. If I want to refer back to the 403B balance in building my financial statements, all I'll have to do is select Equal and then type out what I named the cell. So for example, Amber's IRA balance, I will select this, select Enter, and it will refer back to cell B3.